Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and welcome back to Learn Perl by Doing It. And in this tutorial, we're going to look at downloading stuff from the internet and we're going to look at a really simple way that you can download images and HTML files. So I'm going to use Eclipse this time and I've installed the Epic Perl plugin as described in the first tutorial in this series. And I'm going to go to File, New, Other, and I'll select Perl Project here, and click Next, and I'll give this a name, and let's call it Tutorial 3, that should do the trick, and I'll click Finish, and then I'll right-click Project and go to New, Other, and Perl File, click Next, and I'll give this a name, and I'll call it main.pl and it's really important to put the .pl on the end otherwise you might end up with a file that lacks the Perl nature I think it's called which means that it won't format or syntax highlight correctly so click finish so here we've got our Perl file and I'm going to type use strict semicolon use warnings semicolon sub main Open, uh, open a curly parenthesis and hit return and Eclipse has put the closing one in for me and then I'm going to call main by saying main round bracket semicolon so here we can put code in here which is the ent entry point of our program and I just want to mention a couple of things before we continue and one is that in Perl you can put brackets on a, on a method declaration like that but it's again it's optional so you don't have to and sometimes there are some advantages to not doing, in fact. And uh, I've noticed that this Perl plugin formats Perl in this style, in the inline bracket style. So if I type it like that, which will be acceptable Perl, and do Control Shift and F to auto format it, it puts the bracket there by default. So I'm going to carry on with that style. And you can also right click and go to. Well, I thought you could, yeah, source and format, that's it. So that will automatically format your code for you. And it's worth formatting your code automatically a lot because there's nothing worse than badly formatted code. It's really hard to read. So that's Control Shift and F, or just right click and go to source and format. So I'm going to use a module here called LWP Simple. So I'm going to type use and then L W L W P that's I think it's all lower uppercase actually, yeah. L W P and two colons like that. And then simple. And this is auto completing for me. Let's try to get that to work actually. So I'll type the colons again. And let's look in the list here. So this is going to be the stuff that's installed. I'm going to go to LWB, WP Simple, and you finish with a semicolon. So capital LWP and capital S. And if you haven't got that in your system, then you need to, in Windows, as we looked at in the first tutorial, you would, if you type Perl or something like that in your start menu, you can, you can go to this Perl package manager, search for LWP Simple and install it. And it's going to be different, presumably, on, um, with, well, it's going to be different with different installations of Perl. And if you're using Linux or something like that, then either contact your system administrator or just Google something like installing Perl packages. But you may well have this installed by default because it's a really common package. Actually, I've got some um, kind of error here. Let's just save it. And yeah, it's gone away, so that's good. And now that we've included LWP Simple, we can retrieve a HTML file from the internet very, very simply. So I can type get, that's, that's lowercase, this is a subroutine, get, and open a bracket. And in here I can type the URL of an HTML file that I want to retrieve. So you may know that the internet is basically consists of HTML, which is a language that shows, that tells how, what content web pages should actually have and here we're just going to get initially the text of an HTML page so I'll type a URL in here I'll type HTTP colon slash slash www dot and let's use my own site as an example actually um, in fact if I get the URL in Chrome here www.caveofprogramming.com and wait for it to load 
and I was hoping it would put the HTTP there but it hasn't so let's just do control C to copy that and I'll go back to Eclipse and I'll just paste this in here so we've got a complete oh it's actually pasted the HTTP even though it well, didn't appear in the URL bar so here we've got a full URL and that actually returns my HTML as a string so I'm going to just print the string directly by saying print get and the URL and at the end I need a semicolon and before I print it let's say print and in quotes downloading dot 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 and then I'll print backslash n which is a new line just to make this appear on a new line and at the end I'll do the same again I'll say print double quote finished and backslash n and a semicolon and I'll hit um, save so now let's run that so actually I could just run it in Eclipse I was going to go to the command line but there's no real need perhaps so I'll just hit run and it's going to say hopefully downloading and then we're going to see the HTML code here of my website so all this stuff that's coming out here this is what I had to type or what WordPress created for me to create my website uh, the front page of my website and there's no images in it this is just purely downloading text now supposing you want to store that HTML you can use something called get store and the way that works is this let's um, actually what I'll do is I'll comment this out just in case you want to look at it so I'm going to put this code on caveofprogramming.com so uh, you'll be able to refer to it so I'll comment this out and a comment in Perl is a hash character like that or I think in America in the USA I believe this is called a pound sign or in the UK we call it a hash character so I'll comment that out and then let's use get store so I'm going to say get store and again I supply a URL as the first argument like this and then I supply after a comma a second argument which is the name of the file that I want to store to and this can be a full file path but I'm just going to put here let's call it home.html let's say so it's going to store it in the current directory and let's click run like this and I'll say that yes I want to save it so it says downloading and finished and now let's go to that directory so I'll open explorer and I actually put this program in C tutorial Perl I know it's here somewhere I have too much stuff in this directory projects and here it is there's my here it isn't actually is that right yeah we should have tutorial 3 in there somewhere so let's just go back again and double check Perl tutorial 3 here it is okay so there's the directory and this is what I set for the workspace directory of Eclipse when I started it up I told it to put the projects in this directory so it's created tutorial 3 when I created a project here's my main.pl that I'm running and this is just a text file and here's the home.html that we just downloaded and if I click on that to open it then it's going to open in a browser and hopefully hopefully something's happening and here we go this is the file that I downloaded and you can see images in it just because these images have absolute URLs encoded within the within the HTML so when, when you load that page in your browser it's, it will go away and fetch any images that have absolute URLs um, embedded in the HTML so it looks complete but it's actually um, we're, we actually haven't downloaded the images we've just downloaded the text that creates the structure of this page which is basically if you right click to view page, page source this is what we've downloaded text here we can also download images by the same technique so if I look at this logo here let's say I want to download this and I right click and I go to this is going to depend on your browser but let's try copy image location and now I'll go back to Eclipse here so let's look for Eclipse here it is and I'm gonna comment this out 
and now let's say get store open a round bracket and I'm going to use a single quote here I'm going to put a string within single quotes just because within double quotes special kind of characters in strings will get interpreted and here I want to if you use single quotes you're meaning don't try to interpret this string in any fancy way it's just literally a string so I want to say that no matter what weird characters have there are in the stuff that I'm about to paste in I want Perl to interpret it literally as a string so I use single quotes and I do control V although I think this would this would work with double quotes anyway and comma and now again I'm going to say logo.png and that's the name of the file that I want to store and I think there's that film I think it's called The Social Network but I'm not sure about that guy who started Facebook and if I remember rightly he uses Perl for downloading images in that film and Perl is really great for doing that sort of thing so let's try this and I'm going to run this and it's, it says downloading and finished and it's pretty quick and now I go to um, let's go to that directory and if this doesn't work it may be that you're using a proxy or something and it might get a little more complicated but usually especially if you're working at home and there's, there's no complicated internet setup in your way usually this will work so I'll go to that directory again and here's the logo and let's double click it and there's the logo that I just downloaded I'm gonna. I think it's worth mentioning one last thing in this tutorial, which is that this actually returns a return code. So I can say, and now I'm going to say my dollar. Where's the dollar on this Hungarian keyboard I'm using? There's a question. My dollar. Uh, I meant to have a space. So my space dollar code equals. And now what this is is this is a variable which could hold any single value. It could be a string or a number or anything. And my were forced to use to say this is the first occurrence of this occurrence of this variable. And we're forced to use my or something like it if we put use strict to the top of the file. And uh, that's a really good thing to do because if you're not forced to declare the first use of a variable, if you then misspell it later on, then you might not notice and you'll have terrible problems so you put use strict in declare all your variables with my and remember that single value variables have to start with a dollar so say my dollar code equals get store and then we can use an if statement and we can say if dollar code equals equals so we're using equals equals to test if it's equal to something 200 and 200 is the success code for when you're downloading HTML and we can say print success backslash n. Conversely, if it doesn't work, we can say else and print failed, let's say, backslash n. And so now we know whether this get story is going to succeed or not. Let's try that. Let's run it. And it's going to say success. But if I change this to a file that doesn't exist by putting a random character on the end and then run it, then it's going to tell me, hopefully, failed. So we know that we didn't download it successfully. That's enough for this tutorial. I hope that's given you a taste of how easy it is to get stuff done in Perl. And as I said, if this doesn't work, you may have problems with a proxy. And uh, do let me know, john at caveofprogramming.com, and maybe we'll look at that in a future tutorial. But that's it for this time, and until next time, happy coding.